Colon cancer is a very common cancer. In fact, 5% of the population will get affected by colon cancer at one point in their life. So one in 20 people will have colon cancer at one point during their life. Uh, colon cancer is actually considered the second leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States. So 3% of the population, 3% of people die from colon cancer. Uh, studies, statistics have shown that uh, 50,000 people die every year from colon cancer. So it's a very common cancer. It has a high mortality. The reason I think it's important to raise public awareness about it is that it's not only a common cancer, it's a preventable cancer. So colon cancer can be prevented by doing the right screening tests at the right time. Colon cancer can present with a variety of symptoms that uh, de depend on the location of the colon cancer, uh, which part of the colon is affected, and the stage of the colon cancer. Some of the most common symptoms include blood in the stools, for example, which can be either bright red blood if the colon cancer is on the left side of the colon, or can be black stools, which we call melena, or dark stools if the colon cancer affects the right side of the colon. So this is one uh, symptom that, that uh, can be a sign of colon cancer. Other symptoms include change in your bowel movements. If somebody has regular bowel movements and now they have new onset constipation or new onset diarrhea, uh, this can be a sign of colon cancer. Also, unexplained abdominal pain it can be a sign of colon cancer. Uh, weight loss of unknown uh, origin, uh, especially if the cancer has advanced to, a, to an advanced stage, can be a sign of colon cancer. Colon cancer can sometimes also present with anemia. The patient can have a blood work and uh, found to be anemic, and this can be a presenting sign of colon cancer. It's important to know also that although these are the most common uh, symptoms of colon cancer, a lot of time colon cancer can be asymptomatic, so uh, at, especially at the early stages. That's why it's important to do the right screening test at the right time and to detect colon cancer at an early stage before it becomes advanced because the, the prognosis and the treatment options and the cure rate is much higher when the colon cancer is detected early versus when it's spread to other organs. So colon cancer has a lot of risk factors. In general, those risk factors can be divided in two categories. We have genetic risk factors for colon cancer and environmental risk factors. In terms of genetic risk factors, we know that the family history of colon cancer is considered uh, an important risk factor. So having a first degree family member with colon cancer or two and more second degree relatives with colon cancer increases uh, someone's risk of having colon cancer. That's why we recommend, uh, while we recommend screening the general population patients with no risk factors uh, with colon cancer at the age of 50, people who have a family history of colon cancer and need to be screened at an earlier age, usually the age of 40 is recommended for those people. So this is, uh, related, this is when it comes to genetic risk factors, uh, the family history is very important. Regarding environmental risk factors for colon cancer, we know that certain diets, uh, like a diet rich in uh, meat and animal fat, especially processed meat like ham, uh, bacon, uh, corned beef, increase your risk of colon cancer. On the other hand, a diet uh, rich in fruits and vegetables and fibers can be protective from colon cancer. Other environmental risk factors include smoking. So smoking increases the risk of many cancers, including colon cancer. Excessive alcohol intake can also increase the risk of colon cancer. Uh, having diabetes and being overweight is also considered a risk factor for colon cancer. Uh, there are certain uh, chronic uh, gastrointestinal conditions like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis that can increase the risk of colon cancer, especially if the patient has this condition for more than 10 years. That's why we screen those patients on a more aggressive basis uh, once they have those conditions. Uh, other risk factors for colon cancer also includes, uh, include the race. Uh, being African-American, uh, African, we know that African-Americans have a higher risk for having colon cancer, and colon cancer can be actually more aggressive and African Americans. That's why the American College of Gastroenterology recommends screening for colon cancer in African Americans at the age of 45 instead of, instead of the age of 50, uh, without, even without having a family history of colon cancer. One of the most important risk factors is age. Uh, colon cancer is not a, a cancer usually of young uh, people. It's rare before the age of 40 and 50. That's why it's recommended to screen uh, at the age of 50 even without a family history of colon cancer.
So there are a few tests that are uh, acceptable options for uh, colon cancer screening. The most commonly used test is a colonoscopy. Uh, colonoscopy is a, a procedure that involves giving the patient a prep the night before the procedure to clean the colon out. Then on the day of the procedure, the patient will have an IV and will get sedation medication so they'll be comfortable and sleepy. And then we use a flexible tube with a light that we call a colonoscope. Uh, it has a built-in camera and the entire colon will be, will be checked for uh, polyps and, um, and cancers. Uh, colonoscopy is actually uh, considered the preferred test for colon cancer by many societies, including the American College of Gastroenterology. Uh, it has the advantage of being a, uh, not only a diagnostic test, but also a therapeutic test. So it allows us to look for polyps and uh, detect them and remove them at the time of the procedure to prevent them from becoming cancerous uh, down the road. So polyps are benign, small benign growth that have the potential to turn into cancer over time. Another advantage of colonoscopy is that we have, uh, we have studies, we have long-term studies showing that colonoscopy can save lives, can actually decrease the mortality from colon cancer by detecting it early, where it's treatable uh, more than at an advanced stage, and by detecting polyps before they turn into cancers. A colonoscopy, like I mentioned, is the preferred uh, test uh, by many societies. Other screening tools include checking stools for blood. Uh, there's a test uh, that's called the fecal occult blood test where the patient submits samples uh, of stools to, check, to be checked for blood. Uh, this test uh, is convenient and easy. However, uh, it has some, uh, some uh, disadvantages, some limitations. It's not very sensitive and you can have a lot of false positive. And another limitation of the test is that it needs to be repeated yearly. So the patient will have to do this test every year, and once it's positive, the patient will be referred for a colonoscopy. So a fecal occult blood test or fecal immunochemical testing is another technique that also uh, follows the same principle of looking for blood in the stool, which can be a, a sign of, of colon cancer. So the stool DNA test, also known as Cologuard test, is a test that combines checking for blood in the stools and checking for abnormal DNA in the stools. So the patient will be submitting an entire stool specimen that will be, be sent to the lab, and the test will check for blood in the stools and for mutations of cancers. Can mutations are changes in the DNA sequences that happen when a cell goes from being a normal cell to a cancerous cell. So, uh, cancers shed those mutations, colon cancer shed those abnormal DNA sequences or those mutations in the stools. So the test will be looking for those abnormal uh, mutations in the stools. And by combining checking for blood in the stools and, combine, and checking for abnormal DNA in the stools, the test has actually higher sensitivity than just checking for blood in the stools. It's a sensitive test. It actually det detects colon cancer in about 90 to 92 percent of the time. However, there are some limitations that uh, patients need to be aware of uh, before doing this test. First of all, it's a new test. We don't have a lot of long-term studies about the test. It's recommended to check uh, the, to do this test every three years, even when it's negative. Uh, however, this recommendation is not based on long-term studies, so we don't know if three years is a safe enough interval uh, or, or if we're going to be uh, missing colon cancer in between. Another uh, limitation of the study uh, from the convenience standpoint, it, uh, it consists on submit, submitting an entire uh, stool specimen that will be checked for uh, DNA and for stools, which may be inconvenient for, for some patients. The most important limitation of this test is actually that studies have shown that in 10% of the time, if you have a positive stool DNA test, you have a negative colonoscopy. So uh, we don't know what to do in this scenario when we send the patient to have this test and the test is positive, but the colonoscopy is negative for any uh, polyps or cancers, uh, we don't know what the clinical significance of this finding. Is it related to the patient having a cancer somewhere else along the GI tract? Or do these patients have a higher susceptibility to have colon cancer later on? Should we screen them more aggressively? Uh, we don't have studies addressing, uh, addressing this question yet, and we don't know what the significance of this is. And as you can expect, this issue can, uh, can cause a lot of anxiety in the patients when they find abnormal mutations in the stools and can, of course, generate a lot of uh, procedures that may not be necessary 
and can increase the cost. In general, any test is better than no test at all. And like I mentioned before, colon cancer is preventable. And the reason it's preventable is that because it usually arises from polyps, that uh, polyps are growth that can become cancerous uh, down the road. And it usually takes years for a polyp to become cancer. That's why it's important to get screened because by finding and detecting those polyps and removing them, we prevent them from becoming cancerous.